Hello, I'm Jay Stansfield and I'm going to be showing you how to get your paperback printed with Kindle Direct Publishing. Now, you'd probably be forgiven for thinking it was just for ebooks and it's not. They do paperbacks, but you can also turn your paperback into a Kindle ebook as well. But anyway, this is the basics of it okay so they do help you through it a lot so it says book content you can upload a manuscript use our free creation tools to create children's books educational content comics and manga and they've got some amazing tools that you can use i would recommend taking a look at those here that's something for another another time so i mean you can click that and they, they give you a lot of tips on what to do. Very useful to read those. I didn't, which is why I had loads of problems. Um, but it's, it's really great. You can upload the book cover. They've got a cover creator. Um, you can upload a cover of your own. Now, depending on what software you use, you might not want to do that yourself. You might want someone else to do that. That's something that I can offer. If necessary, I could help you with the book cover. Um, if you want to do it yourself, just go for it. Again, there's a link, creating a great cover, and then it takes you to a cover creator, example covers, and you can download templates and things. You need those, okay? You need the templates. The templates on KDP Amazon are very, very useful. So um, then it tells you about your description, keywords and categories, and then you get a free ISBN, which is amazing. Getting a free ISBN is an amazing thing. So you get that so you can publish your paperback and they also print it onto your book as well, which is amazing. So that's all those things. There's, there are tips. I do recommend reading those if you want to be very thorough in what you're doing or you can just jump into clicking paperback. Now, as you can see here, I've started a new book, which is in the process. But don't look at that. Don't tell anyone about that. Thanks. Um, this is my book that's being published so it says that it's live okay it's live on amazon available to purchase that gets me very excited because that's my first ever book ever and it's done okay so far um no point making a kindle book of that because it's a coloring book but you never know i might do one day just so you won't be able to read it on a kindle it'd be weird so Let's create a new tile. Let's just jump in. We'll do we'll do it how I did it. And then you can see where I may have fallen down. And obviously avoid doing that yourself. So you click on paperback. And it takes you to the first page, which is your paperback details. You do the language. You give it a, a title, obviously. So it's like my sexy new book, baby. Give it a subtitle if you want, obviously. Or if it's a part of a series, you can do that. Give it an edition number if you want to do that. Put your name in. So obviously, you know, I am Mr. J Stansfield. That's me. I'm the author there. Any contributors of any extra authors or uh, what else do we have? Illustrators or photographers, anything else, any contributions, you can use those too. Now, the description part of it, I was dismayed to find that if you type a line and then type a line underneath and then type a line underneath that etc when you come to publish a book it doesn't look like that it looks like this and i was sad because when it finally got published and I went to look at the description, it just looked terrible. So I had to find a new a website to help me, which was um, called sellerapp.com. Okay. If you go to sellerapp.com and then Amazon product description editor, blah, blah, blah. When you type in your description, um, it has the option to have bullet points and uh, formatting like bold, bold lettering, italics. Um, basically helps you to create a HTML description because that's what Amazon uses. So you'll copy what they 
have in their code, if you will. You put it into your description and it's formatted exactly as you want it, which is amazing. And you want to do that. That's absolutely important that you do go to that and, and do it that way. The publishing rights, um, obviously make sure you own them. Keywords. Now, keywords are obviously very important. It does tell you how to choose the keywords. This all depends on the content of your book. It's a bit of trial and error, I suppose. It does say it's optional, but they are important to put in just so that when people type in to Amazon, you know, whatever your book is, it could be a cookery book or it could be a book about f marketing techniques, whatever it is, you need to make sure that you fill those in with relevant keywords. Okay. I mean, I had colouring, kids, activity, books, journal, things like that. It, I don't think it will come up immediately. It depends if people are buying it or not. But eventually, I'm, I'm pretty sure those keywords will help. Um, Categories, also important. So you click a category, it gives you what kind of book, you've, what kind of genre your book lands in, what category. So if it's fiction, you click on the little plus, you've got all these. So, you know, if it's an Amish and Mennonite <laughs> content, then you would obviously choose Amish and Mennonite. Or whatever it is, could be about, could be lesbian content, could be medical content, whatever you decide to choose make sure you do that and it says you can choose up to two adult content self-explanatory so i'll just save that and continue just so you can oh no it's not going to let me do it unless I'm, okay so i own the copyright keywords optional categories let's choose a category okay let's do um let's say this book is is general art and art and politics for example this imaginary book uh and it doesn't contain adult material come on save and continue save successful so once you've done that uh, you can get Amazon to assign you a free ISBN this is amazing if, if you've got one already fine but you want this this is important publication date you can uh, yeah if you're doing it for the first time leave it blank and it will publish it on the date that it that it gets approved I would leave that to be honest now with the print with the print options if it's a book, like a novel, cream paper is always nice because it makes it look a bit more professional. I chose black and white interior because I was I made a black and white colouring book. The next book I'm working on, I want a full colour interior, but I think it pushes the price up, so it pushes your royalties down, which is obviously important because they're printing in colour, so it's it's going to cost more to print, but you choose whichever one you decide, you choose that. Trim size, this is where you choose the size of your book. Six by nine, that's like a standard novel. If you select a different size, you've got many different sizes you can choose from. Now, the non-standard trim sizes, which is what I chose, means that it's got limited distribution options. I think with the popular trim sizes, they get sent, there's, a, there's the possibility of, of, of bookstores buying your book in bulk for printing costs, I think, or maybe more, so that you can have them stocked in stores. But the non-standard trim sizes, I don't think they will take them. You can also do your own trim size, which is really cool. That's really cool. But you have to remember... Um, again, I don't think that they will be distributed. It tells you, it does tell tell you, it's not industry standard. Um, so you can choose your print size. So just for now, we'll just choose a standard one for now. Bleed settings. So again, it, it does run you through this. This is where I went wrong. So this is used to support images and illustrations where, and most bit books don't have a bleed. However, mine did because I had the um, pictures in it. So you click it, but it will only allow you to upload a PDF if you're having illustrations with bleed. If you have no bleed, you can upload Word documents or any whatever you're comfortable using and typing in. You can upload them in that format. If you've got a bleed, you've got to upload it as a PDF only, which is slightly more complex. But if you are doing illustration and things, then you need you need that. 
paperback cover finish I chose Max I like the feel it feels so nice and silky it's got a real nice feel to it my new book I'm going to do glossy because it's for children but the matte feel is just amazing I'd recommend matte feels good so the manuscript okay this is massively important download a KDP template you need to do that that's I did that but I, I, I didn't because I'm not typing because it was drawing I messed up on the sizes and I didn't add enough bleed to each side you have to add extra bleed so you download a KDP template you've got blank templates templates with sample content but they download as um, word documents so I couldn't do that anyway because I'm on a Mac so if you're on a Mac you will struggle to download the templates please bear that in mind I'm thinking we should contact Amazon about that to be honest so you click download a blank template it'll download uh, a zip file and it's got all the templates in it um, now I will link to this so you don't have to mess around it should be in my post in the description in the in the blog post so that will help cover creator if you launch cover creator this is really really good I used cover creator so you, you, you carry on you can use some of their images from Amazon you can upload an image from your computer or you can skip it and you can add an image later so I made my cover so it gives you a little um, an idea of what it's going to look like which is pretty cool you know if you've not got many design skills I think I think it's a really good service that they're offering with this nice automated kind of you know easy quick I'm going to put a book out tomorrow kind of vibe which is fine if you want to get your book out that's fine obviously never judge your book by its cover a nice cover does help especially online because it's attracting people's attention so I'd be I'd, you know I'd be inclined to make your own cover and upload your own graphics and stuff all right because it's important really it's important so what you do is you'd upload um it was not let me go back Why did not let me go back one minute let me just try this I'm sorry launch cover creator You would, if you're familiar with Photoshop for creating covers, then that's good. But obviously, you know, using a photo or getting a designer to help does make a massive difference. If you upload from your computer, um, so like my size for my cover of squibbles for example is is a weird size it's square so it probably won't look right when i upload it to you it might recognize it though let's see yeah so it so it's it looks bizarre um because it's not it's not the right format or size for the creator but still you know you can you can still see what it might look like if you were to design it properly um, so that's cool uh, so if we just go back to where we want to be oops if you upload a cover you already have you can do that as well so you upload your cover file there's guides to everything um, please read them if you like me and you don't want to read them, then you're going to get into some hot water. So please read the guides. Once you've done the cover and you've uploaded the manuscript, you set the price. Now I don't know if it's going to, it's not going to let me do this. So once you've uploaded your manuscript and your cover, you can launch a previewer and look at the book, which is really good. So you can see if the trim, the trim is all right on the writing and if the cover looks well, you can do all that now what I will do is I will show you what that looks like because I can I can do it on, on, on my book that I've already published I will show you I'll just go to book pricing it shouldn't it won't do anything 
So you can set the territories you want to sell it in. Hopefully you will pick all territories. If you're just aiming at a particular country, you can do that. But why you do that, I don't know. Set your pricing and, and how much you make per copy. So I don't mind showing you this. Uh, so I set mine at £5. They, they have a 60% royalty rate, which is one, apparently one of the highest of any online publishers. And the printing cost and how much you get for the royalty. So I think it's really great how they show you this you know you can look at the seven other marketplaces that i've set it to as well so expanded distribution um i'm not fully sure why it won't let me do that because they assigned me the isbn i think it's to do with the size that i chose for my book it's not included in expanded distribution. Now, I don't know why that is. I, I think it sends it to different countries or I think it sends it to bookstores. It's a less royalty rate, but it goes into stores, something like that, something along those lines. Um, and then obviously, you know, you click on the magic publishing paperback and then it takes, takes a, a day or two for them to review it. It's actually reviewed by real people, which is rare these days you wouldn't think so for amazon but it is and once they review it and say yes you can do it, it that's it it's live on the store and you can you can direct people to your book and if you're totally happy with it well if you want to tech it, check, test it before you publish it you can request proofs so it'll come with like a, a line across the front of your book saying proof, 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 proof. So you can't really sell it on, but you can check it, you can hold it, you can make sure that it's all okay. And once it is, once you're happy, then you can click, you can click publish and it will hopefully go live. I'm sure there's a, there's another video for creating a Kindle ebook, but I hope that's helped. I hope it's a useful guide and uh, good luck with your book let me know how you get on with it and if this guide was useful and get publishing baby